I want to welcome uh, once again Dr. Rachel uh, Linares. Um, Linares. Linares. Okay. Linares. Okay. How many how many times do we have to do that? That I have to get that right? You know. I don't know. We're working on what three years, four years yeah, at this yeah. point. Yeah, and well, I, I'm so so happy to have Rachel here with us today because um, we've we've worked together for a long time. Um, this is actually the. I think the, the second job that we've sort of interacted on and, and we've sort of interviewed about, but um, Rachel has nine years of experience in lean um, and that experience is in higher education, places like UCLA, uh, Cal State. Um, Channel Islands. Channel Islands, yeah, I, I stumbled on that one. And other private institutions, local government, the County of Ventura, where we first started working together um, manufacturing currently at Lexmark uh, International. She has experience working with Lean, Six Sigma, um, Information Technology Infrastructure Library, um, Safe, uh, Scaled Agile Framework, process improve and other process improvement methodologies. Currently, she works as the IT Experience Program Manager with Lexmark International. Um, running an internally facing customer user customer experience program focused on improving the provision of IT products and services to all of Lexmark. Rachel, thank you for joining us tonight. Definitely. Thank you for in inviting me. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of late there in, in Kentucky and you said the, the weather wasn't the greatest, I guess. Yeah, we're going through our typical thunderstorm uh summer weather so one minute it's sunny and hot the next minute it's hailing and thunderstorming and then it's back to sunny and hot <laughs> yeah so so rachel um yeah glad to talk to you as i said you know this is uh you know we started working with you uh when you were at ventura county but now you're at lexmark but but it's an interesting job title um with this uh customer experience thing like you know, what is that and, and, and what's lean about that? Definitely. So it's a great question. Um, basically, with my job, I work to help IT provide better products and services to all of Lexmark employees. So we work to support everybody. We support everybody from all of our manufacturing operations in China, in Juarez, over in uh, the EU, to all of our sales operations. We have oh, over 15 different campuses throughout the world. Um, we have large campuses in Cebu, in the Philippines, in India, also over in Geneva, Switzerland, in France, in London, all over the place. And so IT can be pretty taxed in terms of helping support the normal day-to-day -day operations, as well as working on special projects and uh, helping with implementation of, of new products and new directions that the business is going. Uh, IT has gotten a little bit of a bad rap at Lexmark over the last decade or so. Sorry, I have two dogs down here. <laughs> um, and, and so part of what my responsibility is, is understanding, documenting those pain points, seeing where there is waste or variation in our processes internally for IT, understanding and helping convey to the rest of IT how that affects Lexmark employees who are our customers, and then making recommendations for changes or if the the need is big enough running a process improvement project there or helping facilitate it um you know we have that's been one of the surprising things about lexmark is we have about i mean i mentioned four different uh, process improvement methodologies there there's more um yeah. and and one of the one of the things that is a challenge is making sure everyone's speaking in the same language uh, because you know we use Lean, we use Six Sigma, we have manufacturing that really it's big into the Six Sigma. Then we have SAFE, which is this new um, agile plus lean sort of framework. And so making sure everyone's kind of going in the same direction and, and understanding the, the same lingo and the same way to approach things. Right. But, well, you know, Rachel, it's, it's, it's interesting um, because, I, I, you know, my next question was just to, for you to tell us a little bit about your lean journey but here you are working in IT and you don't have a, you know, IT program you like, or, or, or background. You didn't sort of study computer programming in college or, or things like that, right? So, so you're coming in as the, the lean process improvement expert into a field where 
you know, as long as there's a process, you can fix it. Is that what we're talking about here? Sort of. And, and that kind of dovetails into my overall lead journey. I mean, I started out in higher education. I was running admissions for private institutions, for, um, for UCLA. I worked at the Anderson School with their admissions in their executive education programs and summer programs. I ran the business office at CSU Channel Islands. So tuition payments, payment plans, financial aid, um, financial literacy to the County of Ventura, which has 26 different agencies, everything from you know, the Sheriff's Office and probation to the healthcare agency to airports and the harbor. Um, and that diversity has been the only thing consistent within my lean journey. But my practice of lean skills is what has allowed me to move through all these different organizations, all these different industries, and still bring that same mindset to it, that same problem solving mindset and that same improvement from the customer user, user standpoint. And so that's really what helped me make this transition to Lexmark. I'm, I'm hopeless with computers sometimes, and yet here I am working in IT, but I'm working in IT because we're approaching things, we're approaching their processes from the standpoint of how is it affecting our users, our customers, which are internal Lexmark employees, how do we make the provision of our, our products and services and our support more efficient, more effective, on time, on budget, you know, all of the above? And that's really where those Lean Six Sigma skills have helped me through that entire journey into an industry that you know, I didn't know anything about <laughs> before coming yeah. to Lexmark. Yeah. So, so Rachel, you, you know, you saw me struggling a little bit, you know, with, with trying to coach the students through, you know, good problem statements and things. Is that, is that sort of part of your approach at Lexmart is, is like working with teams and sort of actually, you know, getting clear on, on what the problem is? Yeah, that half of the time, that's what it is. It's, it's looking at how we, pro, how we provide you know, IT support. How do we handle a help ticket? If we have an incident that's logged, um, you know, a server that's down somewhere, or maybe a network connection that's gone bad, how do we define what that problem is? And then after the fact, how do we do kind of a after action review, I guess you could say, and look at what was the root cause? What can we implement to either, you know, do a pokey okay, do a, a, a quality at the start, quality at the site, prevent the problem from even happening before, um, and do that after, after the fact analysis. Right. The other half of it is teams coming to us, uh, coming to my department, because even though I'm with, even though I run the IT experience program, the department that I'm a part of is called the continual service improvement department. Mm -hmm. And so we are all lean Six Sigma type ITIL type based uh, skill sets. And so we will work with teams that come to us and say, we know we need help with this. You know, mm -hmm. this is an inefficient process. We are having problems, consistent record keeping. We're having problems consistently delivering, you know, what the, what the customer wants. Um, people have problems navigating our internal portal. They don't know where to go. They don't know how to, you know, we get so much, uh, so many forms filled out that go to the wrong person. So many forms filled out with incomplete or incorrect information and they have to go back and refill out a different form. Mm -hmm. And so those are situations where myself and, and others on my team will be brought in and we'll do a process improvement project directly with that team. So it's, it's kind of a mix. It, yeah, it, and you notice, I, I guess, I feel like when you say those things, like incorrect information on the form, why don't they just fix it? I, I don't, you know, is that, um, well, why, why do we need people in your kind of position to actually sort of help people identify things that, that sort of sound or present or seem to be that easy, right? Well, and, and this is something that I found at Lexmark that I found at the County of Ventura. Mm -hmm. People like to use the excuse, well, we're too busy. It takes too much time to solve it. So we just have our workaround and that workaround is going to work. Well, that workaround costs more time. Yeah. That incorrect information on the form and having to fill it out costs frustration on the point of the user. There's no metric that I have in my system that can measure that frustration of that user other than hearing you know, the horror stories of what it's like to work with IT. Uh, so, I mean, I've heard every excuse in the book, you know, we, the system can't support that, or, you know, that's a, a customizable thing. We don't want to change the, the form 
or we have to wait till this next upgrade, or we don't have time to focus on that. Mm -hmm. So if I've, I've heard every excuse in the book. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hey, um, so, so I want to, I want to encourage the, the students um, to ask some questions. And if you've got a question for Rachel, you can go ahead and type it in the, in the chat room there. Um, but, but Rachel, could you tell us a little bit maybe about, you know, some current big challenge you're working on or project? Yeah, definitely. So, so one of the projects that I'm working on right now, um, Lexmark is in manufacturing. We manufacture printers, we manufacture printer cartridges. We have uh, facilities all over the world. And once these products are manufactured, they will go to distribution centers also all over the world. If the product, if the quality engineers find a defect in something, so whether it's a printer that's not working, a circuit board that's not right, something wrong with a, a printer cartridge, they'll use something called a product hold. That product hold is supposed to be, supposed to be a process for them to notify the manufacturers, the distributors, internal Lexmark, as well as third party, uh, third party distributors, that there's a problem and this is the way to solve it. Either they're going to hold the product and they'll have a workaround. Um, they'll hold the product, but they don't have a workaround yet, or they need to send the product back or they're going to destroy the product, you know, mm -hmm. so, right. something along those lines. Right. And so this process of how they send out these notifications and how they work through documenting what's wrong and then maintain that quality documentation after the product hold is closed, after they've figured out what they're going to do and taking care of all the product, they have to hold on to those records for seven years in order to maintain ISO standards. But that process is broken because uh, the, the problems that they're experiencing are um, lack of the right people getting the notifications, lack of the documentation of what's happening with the product that's out in the system, getting back into the record so a lack of record keeping or you know a lack of, of keeping that information in one consolidated record right. uh, and then also we ran in they're running into a licensing issue where there are limited numbers of licenses to use the software that they're using for this process and so it limits access uh, mm -hmm. so that's that's what I'm working on right now. And, and the hardest part was getting some of these quality engineers who are very, you know, methodical, they're very engineering focused to not rush to solve the problem. You know, that, that was one of the first things they wanted to do is, oh, let's do this, let's do this, let's switch to a different uh, software altogether. And so it, it took, you know, a couple of, of reminders and some coaching through one of our first sessions you know, let's really talk this out. What's your current state of your process? Where are you seeing problems? What, what's the actual problem? And how can we delve down to, you know, it's a licensing issue or it's a problem of our third party vendors not putting, not replying to the emails in the right way to get yeah. the notes logged into the system. Um, so it even, you know, even with seasoned professionals, <laughs> it yeah. can be hard to really help them take a step back and say, we have to define the problem first. We can't jump right. ahead of ourselves. Right. Well, very good. Let's see. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to sort of up the ante a little bit. So if you have a good question for Rachel, we will give you six points of stand up credit, you know, for um, putting that in there. So that's, you know, should should get somebody excited or or maybe get them off the fence a little bit. So so Rachel, one of the one of the things we run into. Oh, Ray, thank you for saving me on this. I appreciate it. Make sure Ray gets some credit for this. Ray, got a question? Got yes, I do. Uh, Dr. Linares, how have you dealt with the inherent cultural like differences of accepting like a new process if you've worked with different countries? Oh, goodness. Uh, you're going to run into this everywhere, not just within between different countries, between different departments, between different sides of the aisle, you know, different cubicle aisles. Um, and change is hard for everybody, especially when you have something that people are ingrained into, 
Uh, this was something that I faced at the county a lot, especially. Um, Le Lexmark has been a little bit, since there are so many different process improvement methodologies used at Lexmark, they've been a little bit easier to overcome in terms of resistance to change. But especially like at the county, you know, the, the, the saying is it's good enough for government work, so I change it. <laughs> So that was the that was the mentality that you run into every time. And there's no fancy answer for it. There's no glamorous. Here's, you know, here's the magic wand that you wave. It's just consistently saying, you know, this is a problem. It's affecting you this way. It's costing you time. It's costing our customers time. It's costing us goodwill in terms of their frustration level with how they're having to work with us. And so constantly bringing it back to that problem and how it's affecting your employees, their, you know, their, their team or the customers that they're working with, you're gonna chip away at that every time. Yeah. It also helps to have buy-in from the top down and from the bottom up. That was something really amazing at the County of Ventura was that uh, their, their process improvement program was mandated from the Board of Supervisors. So the top governing officials in the county and the CEO said, this is a priority. This is what we are doing to help make our processes better, to help our government run more efficiently. And then they got all the agency heads and uh, middle managers involved. So that was, you know, that was huge, was making sure that there was that buy-in, that public buy-in from the top down. Uh, and then, of course, always if if there was someone who was a holdout and someone who I was working with in a team, and I you know kind of was racking my brain and I couldn't really get them to get on board, you can always go to their manager and say, you know, this is what we're working forwards to as a team. We need to make sure that this person gets on board, and you know I might need your help a little bit with this, and they can give some coaching as well as coaching from myself and coaching from the rest of the team. Peer pressure will win out in, in some things, you know, so you can, peer pressure can be a positive thing that you can use a little bit to help get someone on board with some changes that they might not necessarily be, you know, the happiest about. Did that answer your question? Yep, 100%. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ray. Uh, let's see, Soon me. do you want to go ahead and, and ask your question? Yes. Um, so thank you for joining us, Dr. Rachel. Earlier, you said something about um, you ensure everybody speaks the same language, you know, just with working with engineers and all, uh, with IT professionals, sorry. So I wanted to ask, what is that like? How do you ensure everybody speaks the same language? And also, why is it important for Lean Six Sigma for people to speak the same language? Well, the importance of speaking the same language is it gives everybody a level playing field and you don't have that uh that misunderstanding of oh you're talking about this i thought it was this that wastes time you know that's wasteful in and of itself within your process improvement project so if you can have that level playing field that common understanding and that common language to start off with you know you're that much more ahead of the game now at the at the county of ventura they publicly embraced lean six sigma and that was the methodology that we taught we taught yellow belt classes we taught green belt classes um, and we taught a manager's class so even though uh even though some of the employees might have had exposure to lean, to process improvement outside that was consistently the message that was within the county one thing that i'm championing championing at lexmark because we do have so many different uh, methodologies that have been used have been used successfully and have been embraced by different parts of the business. One thing that I'm working with my manager to put together is kind of like a, you could call it an advisory board, a process improvement advisory board. And we would have certified practitioners from each of these different practices. So Lean and Six Sigma, from ITIL, from SAFE, from Agile, from these different methodologies that are used and have this kind of like, like I said, for lack of a better word, an advisory board come together and talk about how do we make these correlations between agile and lean? How do we make these correlations between ITIL, which is a very IT library structured approach to process improvement? How do we make that, that correlation between ITIL and, um, and Lean Six Sigma? Hmm. And then have these practitioners assist with any of these projects. 
then that way they can be a trusted resource to come to for anyone who's doing a process improvement project throughout the entire company and say, okay, I'm working with manufacturing, which historically has used lean. I'm also working with marketing who has embraced this new safe, agile, um, agile lean hybrid. <laughs> How do I make sure they work together? How do I make sure they're on the same page and the same understanding? Sometimes it's just as simple as, okay, we're going into a process improvement project. We're going to take the first 10 minutes and we're going to talk through what we're going to do. We're going to use the DMAIC process. This is what we do in define. This is what we do in measure. And so you have that, that just in time training, just in time to make sure everybody's on the same page. Right. Uh, so, so that's my idea. I, like I said, we're just starting the framework of it. So I'll let you know how it goes. <laughs> Well, and that points out a good point. I think some of the most successful projects, you know, start out with a lot of conversation, a lot of empathy, trying to understand, you know, what the different um, players and, and what their, you know, everybody's win is, right? It's win, win, win. You know, how do we define what that is, right? Brandon, you got a question for us? Uh, yeah, so I was just thinking about this, like, kind of conceptually. I haven't fully figured out how to form my question, but um, I heard you were working with uh, specifically the IT department a lot. Um, and so when I was thinking about that, I was, like, kind of debating the idea of, like, I feel like there's a lot of situations where you have very technical work that needs to be done or, like, pr have process improvement done on. Do you run into difficulties often, like, trying to have the people who are actually working with whatever the problem is, like communicating that to people who are like outside or it's not necessarily their forte to like be good with coding or like the actual process is being done. Oh my gosh, all the time. Um, so one of the first things that I did, um, IT has what we call a service portal. And this service portal is where they try to have all Lexmark users come to log an incident make an IT request, whether it's for a new computer or a new phone or a new network system or you know, whatever the request is. Um, they try to get them to go there for uh, self-help knowledge articles. So if there's, an, if there's a known problem and there's a known easy troubleshooting solution for it, they write an article, a how-to article. Everything on that portal was in IT jargon. I could not even understand half of it. And I'm, you know, I'm now working in IT. So that has been one of the things that consistently I have said from day one is, you know, you got to think about the language that you're using, using that same language, just like uh, Sunmi's question. You can't speak IT jargon everywhere because your users are going to be lost. <laughs> and that was, a, that was a hard concept really to sell at first, because just like back to, was it Ray's question about change? They didn't want to change. They knew, they knew what it meant. So everyone should know what it meant, right? Yeah. That was, that was a process from day one. And, and I'm glad to say I was finally successful in changing and revamping um, multiple things on that portal now, but, but yes, they're, even with their forward facing portal to the rest of, of Lexmark, they could not see past their own IT jargon. <laughs> so, so yes, that, that is hard. And, um, I know there's, I mean, everybody says that their um, acronym or their, oh, I'm blanking Acronism. on the word. Acronisms, yeah. Yes, that they're, that they're acronym heavy. IT is definitely acronym heavy. And you'll get into people with conversations and they'll just spout off about six or seven or 10 different acronyms. And every time I have to say, time out guys, you know, not everybody understands those. Yes. So let's make sure that, you know, just like you do in writing the first time you write it out and then you use the abbreviation. Let's make sure that we're consistently doing that so that we don't lose the non-IT people in the room. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yep. Sumi, uh, Sumi, why don't, why don't you go ahead and, and, and ask a question? This will be our, our sort of wrap up question here. So go ahead. Yeah. I, I have a follow up question to what Brandon just asked. Sure. Um, so just with lean being in a velocity of a process, so I wanted to ask, how do you pick, I don't want to use the word pick and choose, but if like a million people come to you for help, how do you pick which one to prioritize on? <laughs> oh, that's always fun. Um, I mean, there's a lot of different things that go into it. Uh, 
from, from my standpoint, I, I basically advocate for IT and I advocate for the users, for the general Lexmark users. Nine times out of 10, I will land if there's something that is a high priority for users, I'm going to land with that as my higher priority because not only am I in the process improvement game, I'm also in the PR game trying to improve the PR and the image of, of IT. So if there's if I'm weighing out something that's a, a you know a question between do I work on this project that's more internally IT facing or do I work on this project which is more externally user facing, most times I'm going to come down on the user one first. But you know there's also there's so many things that go into that too because if it's a critical level issue to deal with the 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 IT side of things that can also outweigh the balance. So it's, I mean, I hate to, I hate to sound like, you know, it's different every time, but it's kind of different every time. And you also have to, you know, take into account the, the workload and the work balancing, and then what the overall strategic priorities are. If there's something that's in line with our IT priorities or our larger parent organization or parent department, which is connected technology, it's kind of like IT and then our research and development all, all in one. Um, you know, if there's something that's squarely in line with one of those prior with one of those strategic initiatives, that's got to, you know, that's yeah. got to take priority over anything else. Yeah, Rachel, I think that's really good. And I, I think, you know, just so everybody knows, I think one of the things that when Lean talks about, you know, the customer and the customer determining values, another artifact of that is it's very externally looking, right? A lot of the problems that organizations face is when they try to optimize internally too much and it's good for them, but it's not good for the people outside. That's where waste comes from, right? And Yep. Uh, yeah. I cannot tell you how many times we encountered that at the county. I mean, yeah. you know, you have, for example, I did a lot of work with the resource management agency, which is land use, which is permitting building permits, uh, you know, weights and measures, all of that. And, um, you know, there would be decisions that I would see made for the, the easiness of, of the department, but they didn't put any foresight or, or, or lack, there was a lack of thought into directly how it affected the, the user. Right. Um, you know, the, the customer that comes up to the counter and wants to get their building permit. Right. Uh, so yeah, you, you always have to keep an eye on that. You can never, never sacrifice that. Never forget it. Right. Okay. Well, Rachel, thank you once again for, for being our celebrity guest tonight. I, um, you know, great sharing, great learning from all the students. Let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to turn on my gallery view so that this gets on the uh, the video, but let's all turn on our videos, give Rachel a, a nice Zoom wave goodbye. Rachel, thank you very much. Um, I know it's late there in Kentucky now, so thanks for That's staying okay. up and, and being with us. Um, if any of you are on LinkedIn, I do have my profile on LinkedIn, and I'm happy to connect with any of you afterwards and you know share whatever information I can help you yes. along your lean journey. Never let your lean journey stop. It's going to be arduous. It's going to be frustrating. You're going to pull your hair out at times, but it's all worth it. <laughs> so never, never give up on your lean journey. All right. Thank you, Rachel. And we'll see you later. Thank you very much.